Hey, this is Mike. I'm here to show you how to set up Photo Booth Connected. First thing you'll do is enter your event name. If you'd like a different background image than the default blue image that comes with Photo Booth Connected, you can point it to your image here or replace mine that's in the Assets Backgrounds folder. The folder to monitor is the folder that Photo Booth Connected will watch for new photos. This could be the output folder of your photo booth software or the save folder of your iFi card. If you're running photo booth connected in kiosk mode and on a different machine than your photo booth, you'll have to make sure that the two machines are networked and you'll be watching the share folder, which is the output folder from your photo booth software. The local save folder you can leave as default. A subfolder with your event name will be created for each event and the cached images will be stored there. Kiosk mode is meant to run Photo Booth Connected as a separate upload and print station. Booth mode is meant to be run right at the booth as a plugin of sorts for existing Photo Booth software like Breeze, Spark Booth, Photo Booth, anything that you'd like to add some extra social networking features to. Enabling email allows users to email the photos to themselves. You'll have to sign up for SendGrid. It's free for 200 emails a day, and if you need more, there's a plan for $10 a month and gives you 40,000 emails a month. You'll enter your SendGrid username, your password, and the SendGrid email address. You can add your own subject and message in these fields. If you plan on doing data collection for your client, the email addresses are stored in the CPhotoBooth Connected directory in the name of your event and the email subdirectory in a file called data.txt. Enabling user Facebook allows users to upload the photos directly to their Facebook wall. You can add your own custom caption to the photos and even ask them to like a specific Facebook page. You can require them to like the page in order to post as well. The URL for the Facebook page goes here. And if you set up your own custom Facebook app, you can enter the app ID here. Enabling Client Facebook allows you to set up an account that all photos will automatically be uploaded to in the background. This is a company fan page or corporate page and doesn't require the user to log in. You can add your own custom caption, custom album name, and again, use a custom Facebook app. When you log in, the program will ask you which page you'd like to upload to. You can upload to the main account or to a specific page that you have access to. Enabling Twitter allows users to upload their photos to Twitter. You can add your custom message to go along with the photo here. Enabling SMS allows users to send a link to their photo via SMS. To use this, you'll have to sign up with Twilio. It's free to test out, but to use it at an event, you'll have to sign up. It costs a dollar a month for a phone number, and each SMS costs a penny. You'll enter your Twilio phone number, your account SID, your auth token, and your custom SMS message. Enabling FTP allows all photos to be uploaded in the background to an FTP server. If you have an online gallery that you'd like your photos to go to, you can use this for that. Like most FTP apps, you enter the server, the port, your username and password, and what directory you'd like the photos to go to. You can test the connection to make sure that it's working here. If you enable printing, users can print right from the kiosk. If you're an event photographer, this allows you to have printouts right at the event. If you're running it with a photo booth, you can still print at the booth, but you could also use Photo Booth Connected as a reprint station. The number of prints to choose from, if this is one and the user hits the print button, it'll automatically print. If you set this to a higher number, a dialog will appear that allows the users to select how many prints they want. The maximum number of reprints is the maximum number of times a particular photo can be reprinted. And the scale and the XY margin are tweaks you can make to align with your particular printer. Enabling filters allows the user to select from a variety of Instagram-like filters before they upload or print their photos. Automatically showing the filters will show the filter screen first. If that's unchecked, the user will have to hit the filter button to show the filters. Entire image means that the filter will be applied over the whole image. Filtering only select areas allows you to define certain spots where the filters will be applied, 
this is useful if your overlay has been composited and you don't want the overlay to be affected by the filter as well. You can also add overlays like logos or custom print templates. You'll have a template for landscape and portrait depending on what orientation the photos are. You could also use the overlay feature in conjunction with the filters if your images are at an angle. You could filter the entire image and then reapply the same overlay that you're applying at the booth. The Q feature is enabled if you start PhotoBooth connected up and you're offline. It'll queue up emails, SMS messages, and client Facebook uploads. So next time you're back online, you can have those sent out. Reporting keeps track of all the print counters, email counters, Facebook, Twitter, and SMS uploads. Hitting these icons here will reset the print counters for each event. Enabling SmugMug allows you to have background uploading of the photos to a specific SmugMug gallery. You'll sign into your SmugMug account and select which gallery you'd like to upload. Keep in mind the SmugMug access token only lasts for a few hours of inactivity, so you'll need to do this before each event. The registration tab shows the version and the activation status. If you need to move your license to another computer, deauthorize the computer here first. Then you can reinstall on another computer with the same license.